Hey everyone, Rachel from Desert Blossom Crafts here, back with a new crochet pattern, a part of the Kitchen and Bath Crochet Along. Today's pattern is called the Diagonal Crochet Dishcloth. I'll put some pictures up so you can see it. This is made entirely from corner to corner crochet, so if you are new to this technique, this is a great way to learn the basics of the technique. It's super easy. We will be doing some color changes, but not complicated color changes, just really simple ones. We'll be using two colors, and I'll get more into that soon. Like I said, this is a part of the Kitchen and Bath Crochet Along. Even if you're not a part of the Crochet Along, you can make this pattern. You can also check out all the other themed patterns that go along with this one. There's lots of crochet dishcloths and scrubbies. They are all available on my blog for free as well as a part of a paid ebook with lots of bonus exclusive patterns. This is the best way to download and print out the diagonal crochet dishcloth and all of the other patterns related to it. So if you prefer to work from an ad-free printable pattern, that is the way to go. There will be lots of information down in the description box below. But for now, let's get right into the step-by-step -step tutorial. To make this dishcloth, you're just going to need some worsted weight cotton yarn. I believe this is Crafter's Secret cotton from Hobby Lobby, but I've also used Lily Sugar and Cream. Any worsted weight cotton will work. And then I have a G 4mm crochet hook. And once you have those two things, we are ready to get started. So I've made a slip knot, and I'm just going to insert my hook into that. And this is, like I said, going to be kind of a tutorial for basic corner-to-corner -corner crochet. So we're going to start off with just our one color and learn the basics of this. So start by go ahead and chain six. Three, four, five, six. Now we are going to double crochet in the fourth chain from our hook. And the next two chains. Now that beginning chain three right here is going to count as a stitch and in corner to corner crochet this is called a block we're going to be doing a variety of blocks going diagonally across the work so a block consists of four double crochet we have our chain and then our three regular double crochets that is block number one and that is our first row <laughs> very small the rows are going to increasingly get larger each time so now we're going to chain six again. So corner to corner crochet is very unique in that we are going to be starting with chain sixes. And now we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did. We're going to make another block on this six chain. So skip the first three chains and double crochet in the next one. And double crochet in the next two. Now this is where it can be a little confusing, like which way are these blocks supposed to go? So I like to think of it in a right side, wrong side type of way. So this was our first block we made, right? So we're turning this work now, and after we make our next block, we're going to be going opposite. So this is a wrong side right here, this is our right side. So we never want to have two right side blocks like this. We want to turn. Now that we have our next block, we're going to keep this one right side since this is wrong side. So what I'm going to do is actually slip stitch in this first chain three from the previous block. And now you can see our blocks are connected. Now we're going to make one more block. And this is going to be how we make like most of the blocks. This ones that we just did are like starting blocks. But let me show you this. We're going to chain three. And now we're going to work three double crochets in this chain space. So one, two, and three. And so this is our second block. Here's our first block. So now we have our first row and our second row. One block, two blocks. The next row we will have three blocks. So let's do row three. Now, once we have this foundation kind of done, it's a little bit easier to see where everything goes. So we, we're going to turn our work. 
and we're going to do our starting block again. So we're going to chain six. Anytime we start, we're going to be chaining six. Okay, there's six. Double crochet in the fourth. And the next two. That'll give us our four double crochet block. Now, we have, we don't want to turn our block this way, right? Because then we have two wrong sides. We never want the two wrong sides or two right sides to be together at the same time. So we want to keep it with the right side. We're going to find this first chain right here. Insert our hook. And slip stitch. Okay. Now we're going to make that other block. So that the block we ended on last time is going to be what we use a lot. So let's do it again. Chain three. And make three double crochets into this same space. One. Oops. Two. And three. So there's our next block. And now we're going to slip stitch once again in the top of this next one. Chain three. And make three double crochets into that ending space. And there is our row three and we have three blocks on row three so this is what we're going to repeat for two more rows and then we're going to learn how to join in our new color so remember when you start you're going to turn chain six and then make your first starting block and then you just slip stitch in the top so here are the tops of each block see how it kind of looks like a corner there. That's why it's called corner to corner. So we'd go in there, do our chain three, three double crochet, slip stitch, chain three, and continue all the way down the end. So I'll just start this row with you, and then I'll meet you back for the color change. But for now, so we're doing our starting block here. Now this time we have our right side that we want to be facing because we have wrong side here. We're slip stitching, chaining three, making three double crochet, slip stitching in the top of the next block, and continue that. So we'll have four blocks on this row and five on the next, and then we'll do our color change. So here I have five rows done, one, two, three, four, five. We count our rows. It's easier to count them on the side, counting each block with this method. So now the color change is super simple. We're just gonna make a slip knot and put it on our hook. We're gonna make sure that we're, we have a, a wrong side row facing. So this is what the right side would look like. It kind of tends to go inward whereas the wrong side row bulges out a little bit. And we're just gonna slip stitch in the very first double crochet of the block. And really just start over with our chain six and making our first block. And we're just gonna keep on going with our new color now. Here's our first one, slip stitch in the top, chain three, make our next block, three double crochet, slip stitch, and continue like so. So it's very easy to change colors when you do it on a row like this. So now you might notice with corner to corner crochet, we're getting bigger and bigger. If we just stopped, it would be a triangle. So eventually we're going to have to come and decrease to the other corner. So go ahead and do two rows in this color, the gray or whatever color you're using. Then switch back to the pink or the first color and do two more rows. And after that, I will meet you back 
to start learning how to do the decreases. Alrighty, so here we have our first half completely done and we're ready to start decreasing towards the other corner. So instead of doing our regular chain six at the beginning, that is something we only do when we're increasing. So we're actually gonna start the row differently now. We're gonna turn like usual and then we are gonna do some slip stitches. We're gonna slip stitch in the first three double crochet. So starting at this very, very first one right here. And just kind of pull it tight so it's not noticeable. Not too tight, but you don't want it to be too large either. So there I have three slip stitches now I'm going to slip stitch in the chain three space and chain three. Now we can make our first block like normal and we're going to continue to make blocks like normal. The main difference is just the beginning and the end. So I'm going to do my three double crochets. Then I'm going to slip stitch in the top of the next block chain three, three double crochets, slip stitch and continue like this across the row. So you can see now this is going to be a new corner of the dishcloth. We're going to keep getting smaller and smaller. So I've continued working across the row here. And I'm on my last set, or my last block for this row. So I'm gonna do my three double crochets like normal. And normally we would slip stitch here and make another block, but with this decrease row and for the rest of the rows, we're gonna just slip stitch and be done right like that. So now we have our corners here on either side and we don't have any coming out making it bigger we're just getting smaller now at this point in the dishcloth we are going to do our other set of gray stripes so i'm going to go ahead and grab some scissors and cut this fasten it off now if you were continuing in the pink you would turn and you would do three slip stitches again and then slip stitch in this chain three and do it just like we just did. But now we're just going to do another color change. This is anytime you want to decrease with a color change. So I'm gonna make my slip knot like usual. Now because we are joining the new color for the first time, we're actually going to skip all of this when we're turning, right, we have to work our slip stitches to get over to this chain space. But because we're joining a new thread, we're just gonna slip stitch right in the top of that. So the written instructions, what they say is, join color B with a slip stitch in the first chain three space of the first block. So this is the first block of this row, this first decrease row we did. So here's our chain three space, we're doing our slip stitch. We're gonna pull that a little bit tighter and then start the row like normal. Make our first block and slip stitch in the next block. And the nice thing about corner to corner is it's really just the same thing. Once you get down the basic techniques of increasing and decreasing, they're really the only special things about it. But other than that, we're just continuing to make our blocks and make our blocks. So let's do one more here. One, two, three. Slip stitch. Now let's take a look at this. So here, these blocks are starting to form the flat edge on the other side. So we're getting smaller. So I'll meet you back when I get to here and we'll go through the turning process with decreasing one more time. Here I am with my last block. 
So let's practice turning one more time. So to finish, remember we're slip stitching in that chain three, stopping there, turning. And now let's go through this really closely because we don't want to slip stitch in the slip stitch we just made. And when we turn, that can almost look like a stitch right there, but it's not. So we're just going to put our hook right into the next one and slip stitch. Now we can just kind of adjust this to make sure it's looking nice and then make our next two slip stitches, then slip stitch into the chain space. And now we're ready to start blocks again with a chain three, our double crochet, and our slip stitch. And now we've started this next row. So I would say this is probably the messiest part. It doesn't look quite as clean when we do this, but see how I just pulled that over? If you have any of the other color like poking through, you can kind of adjust it, pull it, and make sure that it's not looking too messy. So that looks a lot better, I would say. But yeah, that is basically everything you need to know to continue with this dishcloth and with corner to corner in general. To finish this dishcloth, you're going to do one more row of the gray, the one I just started, and then you'll do five more rows of the pink so you'll fasten off and join the pink one more time and bring it all the way down to that very last corner stitch on that last row there will just be one block and you do it just the same way but it's just one block and then you fasten off and weave in your ends so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if this is your first time learning corner to corner I hope you can take this technique far and do lots of projects with it. This is a great starting project, so if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments and let me know if you have any questions. I would love to help. Don't forget to check out my related dishcloth and scrubby tutorials. I'll put some on the screen for you to try out next. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.